All right, let me guess. You've stumbled upon this video because you just started an aquarium and you're struggling to keep your fish alive. You think you're doing everything right and can't understand why your water's always cloudy and your fish keep dying. Well, relax. I promise it's gonna be okay because I'm gonna help you get through it in this video. This is one of the most common things that new fish keepers experience and I don't care what you've seen online, everyone that's ever had an aquarium has gone through this. The reason this is happening is because of what's called the nitrogen cycle. And this can be pretty confusing, but don't worry, I've got you covered. This is a dummy's guide to the nitrogen cycle. Before we jump into this, I wanted to talk to you about this video concept and what you can expect out of this series. There's tons of YouTubers out there creating great content about fish keeping, but what's difficult to find are videos that are about the bare bone basics in this hobby. This series is gonna break down common issues with aquariums and fish keeping and do it in the simplest way possible. Dare I say, dummy it down a bit. In the next several weeks, you can expect videos similar to this on keeping your aquarium water clear, keeping a healthy aquarium, and one that's as simple as a dummy's guide to aquariums. Lisa and I are really hoping this series catches on like some of the other series we've done because since 2011, it's been our mission to help new fish keepers stay in this hobby versus bailing out of frustration. So if this sounds good to you, there's never been a better time to subscribe to this channel and also let us know down in the comment section what you think of this concept of doing a dummy's guide to different aspects of this hobby. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, but you know what? Enough rambling, let's get into this. So what is the nitrogen cycle? Well, in its simplest form, this is a natural process in your aquarium that converts toxic substances like ammonia and nitrite into nitrate which is much less harmful for your fish. So it's like a natural filter in your aquarium. It takes harmful, toxic water and makes it safer for the fish. But how and why? Well, to understand this, we have first got to talk about what happens naturally in your aquarium that makes all of this necessary to begin with. When you introduce fish into a brand new aquarium that's full of clean water, the fish are thrilled. It's like you're walking outside on a brisk spring day and smell the flowers. Life couldn't be better, but it doesn't stay that way for long. See, when you're outside smelling the flowers, whether you know it or not, you're constantly producing waste. You're inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide or CO2. This isn't a problem because when you exhale that CO2, it's carried away by the wind and sent throughout the Earth's atmosphere. And it's not just that. When you're standing outside smelling the flowers and realize last night's burritos are ready to make an appearance again, what do you do? Well, unless you're a savage, you go to the bathroom. You do your thing and you flush the toilet, which swishes last night's burritos away and you never have to see it again. But fish are trapped in a box. So when they have to get rid of last night's dinner, they just let it go. They are literally swimming around in their own toilet. And if you think about it, it's kind of sad. And that's still not all. There's also food in the tank that the fish missed when you fed them. The food gets swept away in the current and stuck behind a rock somewhere, and it just sits there and rots. So we've got fish constantly producing waste and food rotting over there in the corner, and all of this is happening inside of a sealed up glass box in a fish toilet that hasn't been flushed. When you think about it, you've got to be asking yourself, how do the fish even survive? Well, it's nature that keeps them alive. So here's what happens. When all of that uneaten food and fish waste accumulate in your aquarium, it creates ammonia. Ammonia is lethal for your fish. Think of ammonia like smoke building up in a small room that you're trapped in. It's not going to kill you right away, but it won't take very long. You're going to be in that room finding it difficult to breathe. You're going to start coughing a little. Your throat is going to start burning and eventually you're going to start to really get desperate and you're going to go anywhere you can to try to get some air. But if you're in a room that's sealed off, you're not going to find any and eventually you're going to suffocate and die. 
and I can't think of a worse way to go. Maybe drowning, or being in an old folks home and having an air conditioner fall on you. Have you ever seen a fish in the aquarium up at the surface gasping for air? Well, if you have, one of two things happened. Either your fish died pretty soon after, which is why you're here watching this video, or you immediately jumped into action to resolve it. The reason why your fish is up at the top gasping for air is because their tank is filling up with smoke. Except it's not smoke. It's ammonia. It's ammonia from all that uneaten food and waste decaying in the water. So does this mean your tank is on fire and all of your fish are going to die? Well, no, and I'm going to help you later on in this video get through that. But first, I want to talk about how nature intervenes and solves this problem the natural way. There's an amazing thing that happens naturally in our aquariums, and that is that bacteria builds up on surfaces. This bacteria is critical to all living things in the tank's survival. This bacteria is called denitrifying bacteria, or it might even be called something even fancier than that, I don't know. But in this video, we're gonna refer to it as beneficial bacteria, just to make things easier. As I said, beneficial bacteria builds naturally in your aquarium. It's nature's answer to combating ammonia. The bacteria builds up and feeds off of that ammonia and converts it to nitrite. Now you're not out of the woods yet, unfortunately, because nitrite is just as lethal to fish as ammonia is. So what now? Well, there's also bacteria that's growing alongside the bacteria that breaks down ammonia, but it's this bacteria's job to convert that nitrite into nitrate. I know this is confusing, but just think of it like this. We have bacteria growing in our aquarium, and it's that bacteria's job to convert ammonia, which is killing our fish, into nitrite, which is also killing our fish. But the bacteria also grows and converts that nitrite into nitrate, which is much less harmful for the fish. So we have no more ammonia, no more nitrite, and we have nitrate in the tank. We're all good now, right? Well, kinda. See, nitrates aren't good for your fish either, but they're a lot less toxic than the other two. We still want to control it though, and unfortunately, there's no bacteria that gets rid of nitrates. But there's good news though, so don't panic. There are two different ways that we can control nitrates in our aquariums. And the first is to just do water changes. Water changes remove some of those nitrates, and then when you put fresh, clean water back in, it's diluting the nitrates even more. And the second way is to incorporate live plants into your aquarium. Plants feed off of nitrates, so this bacteria is not only detoxifying the ammonia and nitrite, but it's also providing nitrates for the plants to feed off of. It's the circle of life. Oh, and something we haven't talked about yet, just like humans, fish are always inhaling oxygen and exhaling CO2. But plants also feed off of CO2. So live plants are a win-win, says the guy that has zero live plants in any of his aquariums. Do as I say, not as I do, please. All right, so let's do a quick recap. I need to prepare myself first. Ammonia is building up in your aquarium because of fish, waste, and leftover food. There is bacteria that naturally grows in your aquarium to combat that ammonia and convert it into nitrite. Nitrite is also harmful for your fish, but the good thing is there's bacteria that's also building that's going to convert that nitrite into nitrate. Unfortunately, there is no bacteria that's going to remove nitrate. We are going to remove nitrate by either doing water changes or introducing live plants into your aquarium. But unfortunately, that's still not the end of this conversation. Oh no, we're just getting started because now you know what happens, but the question becomes, how do we make this happen? When you start up a brand new aquarium, there's none of this bacteria in there. Like I've been saying all along, the bacteria builds naturally, but when you're starting a new tank, you're starting with none. This is why it's so common for new fish keepers to start up an aquarium and for a couple of weeks things are great, but then the water starts to kind of turn a little gray and the fish start gasping for air and dying off and they're all like, what the heck? Everything was fine and everything was perfect, but now the fish are dying. What's happening here? 
Well, you put your fish into a brand new aquarium with good, crisp, clean water. So they're thrilled at first, but you're going to start feeding your fish because, well, they're living things that need to be fed. And when you're feeding them, they're going to start pooping. And while they're pooping, there also is going to be food over in the corner that hasn't been eaten because the fish missed it or whatever. So you've got that waste breaking down, you've got the food breaking down, and it's doing what? It's causing ammonia. And there's no bacteria that's going to combat that ammonia because it hasn't had time to grow yet. If I just described the exact scenario you're going through right now, stay tuned. We're going to get to how to save them, I promise. The process of building this bacteria to convert that ammonia and nitrite into nitrate is called, wait for it, the nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle is gonna happen in your aquarium on its own, but there's easy ways to help it along and get it going faster. But I wanna warn you, for every strategy there is to speed it up, there's also several ways to slow it down. This process requires patience and a lot of patience and also some patience. As I said before, this is a natural process that's going to happen on its own, but it takes time and it also takes you following one major rule in order to make it happen. That rule is there needs to be ammonia in the tank. I know I just lost some of you there, but trust me, it is not as complicated as it sounds. I'm willing to bet that you've heard, just set up your tank and let it run for a month and it'll be fine. This could not be further from the truth and people saying this has probably killed millions of fish. See, bacteria doesn't grow in an aquarium if it doesn't have something to feed on, meaning if there's no ammonia in the tank, there's no reason for the bacteria to grow. If you simply set your tank up and let it run for a month with no fish in it, there's nothing in there that's causing ammonia. If there's no ammonia in there, there's no reason for this bacteria to grow. So the water after a month is literally no safer for your fish than it was day one. So we need ammonia in the tank to make the bacteria grow. Does that mean we need to introduce fish right away? Well, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it. That's something I could do because I've cycled probably a thousand tanks, but not something I'd recommend to a new fish keeper. There's much easier ways to introduce ammonia to the tank that don't involve torturing your fish. The first would be to just put ammonia directly in there or put stuff in the tank that's going to cause ammonia. Back in the old days, people used to use straight up ammonia to accomplish this. And there's even rumors of people urinating in their tanks, which might be the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Look in the comment section and I promise you there's already been someone that's typed, well, I just pee in my tanks. I was 14 once. Fortunately, we don't have to buy a big industrial bottle of ammonia and we don't need to pee in our tanks when there's products like Fritz Fishless Fuel that's made specifically for this. You follow the directions and add it to your tank. This instantly adds ammonia that gets the whole process going, but I gotta warn you, don't use this product if you have fish in the aquarium. That's the equivalent of you being in a sealed off room and someone throws a smoke grenade in there. Don't do that. There's also another way to introduce ammonia that doesn't involve relieving yourself in the tank and that would be to simply throwing fish food in there that'll just sit there and rot. When it rots, it'll cause ammonia. The bacteria will grow to combat it and the whole process will start. So we're starting up a brand new aquarium and we're introducing products or things to introduce ammonia into it. What do we do then? Well, nobody likes to hear this, but we wait. We wait for the bacteria to build and convert that ammonia to nitrite. Then we wait a little more for it to convert that nitrite into nitrate. Then we can add fish. But this takes forever and none of us want to sit around and wait. We want that instant gratification. So is there some kind of a way we can speed this up? Yes. This is where the live bacteria in a bottle comes into play. This is a product you probably heard about when you bought your first tank. The people at the store said you can put this stuff in and add fish right away. Well, let's not be so quick to do that. So here's the thing that I don't really hear people talking about. We've been talking through this whole video that bacteria feeds off of ammonia. 
So if you take that expensive bottle of live bacteria and you dump it into your tank that has no ammonia in there, what's going to happen? The bacteria is just going to starve and die off because there's nothing for it to eat in there. So you're going to end up saying, that product is junk, but in reality, what you did is you just poured that in and killed all of that live bacteria that was in the bottle. I mean, you literally would have been just as good to just dump that bottle straight down the toilet. Live bacteria in a bottle like Fritzyme 7, Dr. Tim's, and Quick Start from API are great products if you use them correctly. The key is there needs to be ammonia in there. So, the best strategy is to introduce ammonia to the tank through a product like this or by throwing fish food in there, then add your live bacteria product. This way, the live bacteria has that ammonia to feed off of and you're well on your way. So let's wrap this up and put a nice bow on it. You're gonna start up your brand new aquarium. You wanna get the cycle going, so you're gonna introduce ammonia, either with a product or by uneaten food or whatever. And once the ammonia is there, you're gonna do one of two things. You're either gonna sit back and wait for that bacteria to grow, or you're gonna introduce a live bacteria product that'll accelerate the whole process. But here's the thing. How do you even know if the ammonia is there to begin with? How would you even know if a product like this is working? I mean, does it smell like cat pee? Well, this is a super easy question to answer. You buy a test kit. This is something you should absolutely buy when you're buying your first tank. I know they're expensive, but if you want to do this right, it's an absolute necessity. Once you've done what you need to do with adding ammonia, you're gonna to wanna to test your water every single day. And what you're gonna see is the ammonia will start to eventually go down and the nitrite will go up. And then you're gonna wait a little bit more and you're gonna see the nitrite go down and the nitrates go up. And when the nitrates go up, my friend, you have just cycled your tank. But what if it's too late? What if you set up your tank, you bought fish day one, you introduced them all into there and everything was fine, but it's been a couple of weeks and now the fish are starting to die off and they're up at the top gasping for air. What are we gonna do to save these fish? Well, let's go back to the room filling up with smoke analogy. If you're in a room and it's filling with smoke, what are you gonna wanna do? You're gonna wanna open a window. To solve that problem in your fish tank, you need to do the same thing except you obviously can't crack a window. The equivalent to that in a fish tank would be to do a water change. Take nasty water full of that ammonia and get it out of there and replace it with good clean water. But here's the number one rule. Please hear me. Don't touch anything else. It's New Fish Keeper's natural reaction to tear everything down and start over. Believe me, this is the worst thing you can do in this situation. Remember when I said bacteria grows on the surfaces? Well, if you take all of the water out, strip everything down and thoroughly clean everything off, you're literally cleaning off all of the bacteria that's grown to this point, setting yourself all the way back to day one. It is the worst thing that you can do in this kind of situation. And please, please, please hear me when I say this, because this is one of the most common mistakes made by new fish keepers, is thinking that this bacteria is in the water. So what they'll do is they'll take all of the water out and the fish, put them in a bucket where they're safe, clean the tank thoroughly, and then put that water back into the tank because they're thinking this bacteria is in the water and it's not. There's trace amounts of it in the water, but nothing that's gonna make a difference. You just removed all of that bacteria when you cleaned out that tank. So just believe me when I tell you it's not in the water. Just act like it doesn't even exist in the water. It's only on the surfaces. You don't want to mess that up. Please, if there's one thing you hear in this video, it's that. The bacteria is on the surfaces. Don't clean it all off of there. Trust me, if you are in this situation, just do water only water changes. Use your siphon and remove water and replace it with clean water that's been treated with water conditioner. 
basically what you're doing when you do a water only water change like this you're doing the equivalent of cracking that window you crack a window you're letting fresh air in which is going to mix with the dirty nasty smoky air that's in the room and some of that is going to go out well the same thing is going to happen here you're going to be removing a lot of that ammonia introducing clean water again treat it with water conditioners and that's going to provide your fish with that breath of fresh air and they're going to be able to get through it better and eventually that smoke grenade that's in your room is going to die off and it's going to stop emitting all of that smoke well the same thing's going to happen here you're doing these water only water changes to get it through the process of where the bacteria is now combating that ammonia and the smoke grenade goes out i hope this is making sense you just want to change water you don't want to clean anything else so that's it it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that but having said that i do understand that this is a very intimidating topic unfortunately we can just only break it down so far the biggest thing that i really want you to remember is there has to be ammonia present for the bacteria to grow in your aquarium so if you just run your aquarium for a month with nothing in there you are not helping things you're just sitting there with a tank full of no fish for a month wasting all of that time there needs to be ammonia in there to feed the bacteria to get this whole process started i hope that this has simplified things and made it a little less intimidating for you and helped you out in your journey to get your new aquarium started i would love to hear from you down in the comment section what you think about all of this and also what you think of this new concept for a video series next week lisa is going to give you a dummy's guide to clear aquarium water so you're definitely going to want to subscribe so you don't miss that and if you're watching this video in the future i'll put that right here thank you so much for watching and until i see you again take care